word for his number one for hip hop and R&B. This is the beat of CT. My name is Jenny Boom Boom. DJ Michi's here. What up, Michi? What's up, Jenny? And today we have Dr. Fika Chima, who's the director of transplant infectious for disease. Oh God. Today we have Dr. Fika Chima, who's the director of transplant infectious disease for Hartford Hospital, Connecticut, and the assistant director for general infectious disease for Hartford Hospital, Connecticut, the assistant professor for the University of Connecticut School of Medicine. My gosh, Dr. Chima. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I like well, that's like a lot of titles there. Holy cow. A lot of <laughs> yeah. And Liani Arroyo, our friend who's the director for the Department of Health and Human Services for the city of Hartford. Hello, ladies. How are you? Welcome to you. Welcome. Oh, thanks. Thank okay. you. So we are uh, in phase two still. We're in phase two. And I know, Michi, you wanted to start off today with Dr. Chima. Yeah. So Dr. Chima, um, you know, I've been in the house uh, quarantine <laughs> for about four months. Um, I'm starting to lose my mind. And <laughs> I think that I'm ready to possibly do some vacation stuff. Um, so I just wanted to know, you know, is it safe right now for us, you know, for summer vacations? Is it safe to travel? That's a great question, uh, Michi. So the two things that we have to really focus on when we think about making plans for vacation is that you really have to look at where you want to go. You know, mm -hmm. we have recently seen on the news and heard uh, very frequently how the number of cases of COVID-19 are dramatically going up in a lot of states. Right. So my recommendations is to definitely avoid traveling to those locations, those cities and those states where the number of cases of COVID-19 have exponentially increased you know namely that would be Houston Florida Arizona uh, Atlanta Georgia my recommendations are that the states of Connecticut uh, you know so far has been doing really well Maine Rhode Island so the beauty of New England is just nature and space right so on a trip uh, I would advise you to take road trips uh, you know, be a little adventurous, uh, book an RV or go camping with your close family unit, but definitely get outdoors because, you know, the virus is here for a while and it's not going to go away for a little bit as we are noticing and seeing the trends in the news that mm -hmm. cases are going up, they're not going down. So staying indoors for a long period of time is not just, it's not good for your mental health. Right. Yeah, and is it kind of like right now um, a do or a die type of situation? I don't mean to use that phrase really, and I'm using that loosely there. Don't look at me like that, Liani. <laughs> um, but, um, I, you know, because it is going to get cold again soon here in Connecticut. Right. And we don't know if our numbers are going to go up or what's going to happen. So should we be getting out now and spending time with family and possibly seeing some friends now just because we don't know what the future holds? Yeah, we did vacation this year, but we just did it in a very modified, separate fashion. We took a road trip to Maine. We booked a lake cabin. It was just me and my children, you know, my spouse. And we just, we usually go with several families of households, but we just thought this year we decided to just stick to us. We were the only bubble there. We were out in the wilderness. We swam on the lake. Uh, we took long walks. We were disconnected from Wi-Fi, the news. And we had a really great time with, you know, making, yeah you know, bonfires, uh, just family time. It was just a good reprieve from everything that has been going around, especially for children. We forget how this is impacting them. Right. Mm, I, I do agree. Cause I feel like my son has been sitting on that darn video game, Yeah. you know, and uh, you know, personally, we were very excited um, about the fact that baseball was going to be starting and they were going to do a season. Mm -hmm. And I brought him to one practice, uh, Dr. Jima, and they, the kids were not social distancing. Yeah. My son said kids were breathing on him, like standing in line, waiting to like throw the ball. They were sweating all around each other. And I pulled him back out of baseball because I was scared. Yeah, I've heard, you know, you have to just be very strict. You know, the kids, it's hard for the kids when they're doing kind of activities like that and then have to mask up and then the kids are not respectful of their, their space and six feet distance. So you have to really kind of pay close attention and be vigilant of that. My kids have gone to camp, but we've done a different kind of camp. We've just done golf camp uh, as well. Uh, my kids tell me that they're very respectful. They're groups of threes and six. So outdoor activity camps are, in my opinion, permissible in the state of Connecticut. Um, at this point, I don't really feel comfortable doing camps with big crowds and children, even though we know that the children relatively have been quite safe from this virus, except for a few cases where there have been reports of inflammatory syndrome. 
but the risk mainly comes in with the kids transmitting the virus to the adults and those adults passing it on to other adults and then bringing it home to their parents and if they live in multi-generational homes to their grandparents so that's just the concern but i feel like i think in here in the state of connecticut we've done such a great job that i think we can start going outdoors and doing all those activities you know go to the park have a picnic uh, go to the beach in rhode island i've done that a couple of times with my kids we've been socially distancing when we go into the stores we wear a mask but very very vigilant of all those things hmm. now traveling and like coming back like is there any like protocol as far as like should we be quarantining ourselves for two weeks before we go back out or go back to work or like is that is that a thing yeah that, that is a thing so we you just have to so the connecticut state says that if you're going to an area where there is an increase in the number of cases if you come back to the state of connecticut you have to quarantine for at least two weeks and doing a test will not get you out of the quarantine. And as a health expert, my recommendation is that even if you were to do a test, you know, you may, the test may be false negative, giving you false assurance that you don't have the virus. But sometimes the, we know that the incubation period of the virus is seven to 10 days. So you may test negative at a point where you may be incubating the virus, but later on the test may turn negative. So mm -hmm. if you, you know, give you false reassurance, you would go out and about and maybe transmitting the virus to other people. Right. So, Liani, uh, with that question, um, how do we know anybody's quarantining? Right. You know, it's it's really challenging. I'm not going to lie and say that there's an easy way to figure this out. Um, it's a voluntary quarantine. We are trying to really impress upon people when they're coming to visit us in Connecticut or if you're a Connecticut uh, resident who is uh, vacation someplace else that you do quarantine. The reason we're able to do these things that Dr. Chima was talking about, being able to go outside more, being able to eat at a restaurant outside, being able to do these activities is because we've done a great job, right? We've been doing a really great job social distancing. We've been doing a really great job wearing our masks. We didn't make wearing a mask political. It's like simply like you should wear a mask because you're protecting yourself and you're protecting your community. And for the most part, people have really rallied around that. But we, you know, we just don't always know if people are quarantining. So we're really trying to impress upon people and call upon their sense of civic duty and community to really help us out. Because if we don't, we're going to end up like the places that we're talking about right now, like Arizona, like Florida, um, like parts of California. This is really serious. And I think we all saw that in April here in Connecticut with all the cases and the hospitals getting full. And, you know, we were very lucky. We, we flattened and in some ways we crushed that curve. But it can happen again. So your public health departments are out there giving messages to community members. The hospital systems are doing it. Our Department of Public Health is doing it. But I would really say your listeners, you know, it's a sense of duty that we're asking you to think about your neighbors, your relatives, your community, because no one wants to go into a shutdown mode again. All right. And Dr. Chima, we are like in mask phase like for years now, right? This is not going away anytime soon. So stock up on masks, right? I mean, get your mask fashion on, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, be creative with it. But, you know, recommendations are the same. Till we have a vaccine that is effective, easily available, and that works. The, the only thing that could prevent us from getting this virus is doing simple things like wear your mask, maintain level of social, physical distance, don't, have, don't crowd bars and restaurants, and don't be in places that puts you at these risks. Uh, and you know, maintain six feet distance when you're outdoors. But you know, don't stay indoors cooped up, like you know, uh, DJ Michi said. We need to get out. We need to like like poor me, DJ Michi has been in his apartment by himself. <laughs> me, me and my dog. <laughs> and he's a single man. He can't date or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you, you need to get online, DJ Michi. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got to figure it out. I got to figure out this quarantine. Oh, don't worry. Dating. He's on Tinder already. He's on <laughs> Tinder. No, I'm getting it. Zoom dating. Zoom dating. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's no obligation. You get to know each other a little bit better. It's, it's a good right. thing. It's a good yeah. thing. Creative. I feel like with the Zoom dating too. I mean, you don't even really have to take a shower or anything. <laughs> it's like it's very true. <laughs> just get on there. It back, taking it back to the old days when it was a phone call, and that's yeah. how you got to meet people. Right? right. Yeah, that was actually mm -hmm. more fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> Than being up close and personal with folks. Um, so you talked about the bars and the restaurants, and uh, Liani, have you eaten out yet? I mean, what's been your experience? I know last time we talked, you weren't doing nothing, girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have. I actually okay. have, right? So, you know, I get to see the data. 
Um, I look at the data from my other colleagues um, from other places. I most certainly have eaten out. Um, we do outdoor dining. Um, I think we ate for the first time inside this past weekend. And it was simply because it was so hot outside that my daughter looked at me. She's like, we're not eating outside today, mom. And I was like, all right. Like, yeah. <laughs> so we went in and we looked and the place was pretty empty, right? And so I felt comfortable doing that. And so we did that this past weekend. It was out on the shore, but we have, we go every Friday night. We head out to Parkville Market. That's our thing. We eat outside. Um, but that's, you know, that's what we're doing. We are trying to get out every weekend. We take a drive someplace so my girls can like run around and, and do things. But I definitely have gone out to eat um, and it keeps you sane. I mean, it makes you feel a little bit of normalcy, a, a tiny absolutely. bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But there's always that weird lingering thing like, wow, things aren't right. You know, a little bit. And, you know, I have a, a almost nine-year-old and a soon-to-be four, four-year-old as well. And my four-year-old asked me all the time, mommy, do, did you beat coronavirus yet? And I have to tell her, no, I haven't yet. I'm sorry. She gets disappointed. But they understand and um, they understand what we're doing. They understand why we're doing what we're doing. And they're thinking about, and I'm talking to them a lot about, we're doing this because your grandmother, uh, who's a 72 years old, is going to turn 72 years old because of your great grandmother, who's going to turn 91 years old. We're doing this for other people in our family who, have, who are sick. So they get it, um, but it does give them a little bit of sense of normalcy because that's what we used to do before in the summer, go to the beach. So we're starting to do those things, but you know, as Dr. Chima says, it's different. It's not with a bunch of friends. Um, we try to go a little earlier in the evening or a little earlier in the morning so we know there's not as many people. Um, and we're wearing our masks to and from the locations that we're going to. So still being very careful, but at the same time, you do have to get out and enjoy the weather a little bit and get that little bit of that sense of normalcy of, okay, like life is not ended. It's just a little different right now. Um, Dr. Chima, you know, you are an expert in, in infectious disease. So, you know, what something occurred to me that someone said to me the other day that when this vaccine comes, right, whenever it comes, people that are healthy won't get it right away, right? It will be the people that are most at risk of being very sick from COVID-19. Is that true? We don't know what the national plan will be or if they will be a national plan but it would make sense that uh, when we do have a vaccine available that it should be produced in large quantities that it is available to everybody because that's the only way that we'll be able to stay ahead and overcome this uh, and also i think if there is a limited supply then it would make sense that the vulnerable population who are adversely affected with covid 19 will be allowed to have this vaccination accessible to them a little bit earlier than the rest of the population. Mm. Um, you know, I'll add a little bit to that um, as well. So I know the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention really is working on that right now. And they have a whole variety of scenarios that they work through, depending on how many doses are produced, who will get right. them. And there definitely will be a priority. There's always a priority when vaccines first come out. Um, you know, we need to take care of the individuals that are taking care of people, right? Because we need them to be healthy. Right, yeah. like you, Dr. Chima, right? Right. No. <laughs> and that's yeah. kind of the approach we have with the flu vaccine, too. We, we vaccinate all the healthcare workers will be more yes. at risk. Uh, we, that, we try to get all the immune compromised population, yes. uh, the elderly population first. And then, you know, obviously we advocate uh, as, you know, infectious disease specialists and clinicians that everybody should be up to date on the flu vaccine especially coming into the flu season this year because, you know, there is a very strong possibility that they could be, you know, flu vaccine as well as the second wave of the COVID-19. Okay. So let me ask you a scenario, uh, ladies. Over 4th of July weekend, we always normally have like a bunch of people at our house, but this year we invited just a few folks to our house. And I, you know, was very blatant in saying like, these are the folks that are going to be there. These are the folks that said they definitely want to come. I gave a list to each person that was attending of who would be there. And I said, listen, politeness is out the door. Like if you don't feel comfortable, you don't feel comfortable. And I had a few people tell me, you know, like, yeah, I don't feel comfortable. Long story short, we only invited a few folks over. We had 12 total because, you know, I got a lot of kids. So we had 12 total uh, in the backyard for a 4th of July weekend. And we were very nervous about even having anybody over, you you know, it's just people we hadn't seen since the wintertime, our best, my best friends. So long story short, was I right in what I did by having people to our house uh, with my kids? I, I guess it was, well, we had six guests. So was I right in doing that? Or because afterwards, I kind of felt funny about the fact that we had folks over. And 
you know, now I feel like I have to wait two weeks to see whether or not I get sick. It's a very strange scenario. Yeah, I, I feel that I think at this point in the current situation in the state of Connecticut, since we have been doing well and our numbers have been uh, well under control, outdoor uh, entertaining with limited quantities is is acceptable, like 10 to 12 range. And, you know, we have some state guidelines on how many people are permitted. But I still say to stay vigilant, you know, I, I don't like to have a lot of families over because you don't really know what their uh, practice habits are in terms of social distancing mask wearing so I try to socialize and include people in my bubble who I know are hundred percent adherence with their mask and have the same values about how they feel about keeping themselves safe and I know that being outdoors with them in that scenario is relatively uh, risk less risky so nothing will be risk free but it's definitely less risky. We do know through science and the data that has been published that being indoors in crowded spaces for prolonged period of time is a much higher risk, so significantly higher than being outdoors. So I say that if you belong to the vulnerable population, uh, your older group, you have other comorbidities like diabetes, hypertension, I would not be, if I had those conditions, I would not be the first person to be indoors in somebody's house at a party or a, you know having an indoor uh, a socializing event. I feel better about being outdoors, but I would limit the number of people. Like I had my, my birthday a couple of weeks ago and I had like six, seven people over. We just sat outside, they brought their own food. At that point, you know, I'm a little bit extra, but I think we just need to be, but they all felt comfortable bringing their food. I said, you know, they brought their own food, they brought their own chairs, and then uh, we just sat six feet apart and we just hung out. But it was kind of nice to celebrate in those ways. And I think we have to reconnect to that piece because we're very social as human beings and we, we miss that piece. Right. And I, that's how I felt. Like, this, this now is the time. If anything, do you agree, Liani, or no? Liani's over there looking at me like, I don't know. <laughs> no, look, I, I think mental health is just as important as your physical health, right? And your mental health also affects your physical health. And so you, we have to thread that needle. And as Dr. Chima has said, we're lucky enough to be in a really good place in the state of Connecticut that is allowing us to do some of these things. Look, I, you know, Memorial Day weekend, I had my mom my brother, my sister-in-law, and her mother over to our home, right? No hugs or kisses. We sat outside. Right. Um, right. You know, we didn't share food. Everyone had their own, you know, set of utensils and used that to, to get food. That's what we did because we needed to see each other, right? And, you know, I went more than, almost more than a month before seeing my mom again. So you, you have to do things that feel right and feel comfortable. Um, again, acknowledging that nothing is risk-free and acknowledging that anything that you do carries a certain amount of risk, but we have a lot of lessons learned about harm reduction. And we, we have, while there's still a lot of information we don't have about the coronavirus, there is more information that we have today in July than we did in March when it first came into Connecticut. So we're making the best use of that information, but you have to remain vigilant. You still have to remain very, very vigilant and be mindful. You know, when I have colleagues come into my office, um, I'm putting my mask on, they're putting their mask right, on, right. even though I'm entitled to not have my mask on because I'm sitting at my desk, they come in, we, we're masked. If if um, we're both hot or, or uh, you know, we're hot or, and it's just my office is like a sauna sometimes, I have them sit on the other side of the room, like 12 feet away from me, and that's how we conduct our meetings. So everything is about risk reduction and how do I minimize the risk, understanding that there's always a risk no matter what I'm doing until we have a vaccine. Okay. And, and just getting back to uh, my own personal experience, because I'm scared to death. No, I'm kidding. Um, Dr. Chima, the pool, the pool, is that okay? Because I put an extra chlorine tablet in there. <laughs> just letting you know for everybody came over. So is that your own pool? It's my pool. Yes. At my house. I think in your own pool, you're fine. And even in your pool, you know, if you, as long as it's not crowded, you can have, you know, people in there but I don't like to you know open that gate and you know tell people oh yeah have a party have a pool party you know because it, it you know there's a very fine line and very gray line that sometimes like you mentioned before when you start kids started playing t-ball and baseball it's hard to maintain that level of respect of six feet so I would just still say your own pool is safe you can have uh, a few people in there as long as they're not in each other's space uh, and they can swim at different, in different directions, uh, stay six feet apart. 
But if it's just your family using your pool, it's completely accessible uh, and completely okay. Okay. And public pools are open though, Liani, correct? So different cities have made different calculations as to how they want to handle pools. There's no evidence that um, coronavirus can be spread through water, right? So being in a, the act of being in a pool at this point in time is not necessarily a risk for you. What the risk is, is being close to people and being around people. So different municipalities have uh, addressed this in different ways based on the resources that they have. Here in Hartford, we made the decision to not open our public pools because we didn't feel that we would be, a, um, be able to adequately ensure social distancing, right? Um, but other places have decided to open their pools. And so everyone is approaching it different, but even those uh, municipalities that have opened their pools have lots of rules that the state has requested that we follow, and they felt that they can do that. So again, it's timed entry because they're limiting the number of people. It's not traveling, not coming with a large group of people that's not your, that are not living with you, that are not a part of your family. Um, and that's a little hard. We felt here in Hartford to police, right? And so we chose not to open our um, our public pools. We did open our spray pads for the kids because we felt that. that I did see that. Yeah. I did see that. Yeah. So we did do that, and we have um, a, a splash pad program. We have individuals from our rec department out there. They're keeping an eye on the kids. They're making sure that they're not on top of each other. So you know, different things. But again, it's all about risk reduction. Okay. Uh, Meech, I know you're very concerned about these gas station parties that are happening. <laughs> Liana, you've been seeing the gas station parties that are happening, right? Um, I am going to say that I haven't. And so oh, give me any yeah. more information here. So, okay. um, I haven't heard either. Yeah, so, this is something new. Yeah, so I guess, I guess with all the, obviously all the bars and all the clubs and everything still being shut down. Uh, She's writing it down right now. I am. Too. <laughs> I, you know, I don't, I don't want to be a snitch. No, um, <laughs> There's a, just but, go on uh, Facebook and, and type in gas station. Yeah, I'm going to. <laughs> I, I've been, I've been seeing online. There's been like a lot of hangouts where just a lot of people have been hanging out at gas stations at, you know, these different places like that, where they're kind of, I guess that's their entertainment. That's the, that's the way to be around all their friends and they're blessed. And, and I said on the air, cool, but can you put a mask on? Right. Cause yes. a lot of that is not happening. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm going to look at this. It doesn't surprise me that these things are happening. I didn't know they were happening at gas stations. That, that's a new twist. That's a new twist. Yeah, it's but, like B, you know, VIP sections and everything. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, you know, I'll say this, like, young people often think they're invincible, right? And right. the reality has been that, you know, for better or for worse, young people when they get sick, don't, don't necessarily get as sick. That doesn't mean they don't get sick. That doesn't mean that they don't wind up in the hospital. But we haven't seen, you know, like what happened amongst our elderly population, right? We haven't seen that. And I say yet, because we don't know what can happen. But it's important to remember that, okay, you want to see your friends, you want to hang out at the gas station, you have your, you know, car trunks open, your base pumping, that's fine. Leanne just set up the whole scenario. <laughs> wear your mask. Look, I was young too one time. I remember how those things were, right? But yeah. it, wear your mask. Just wear yeah. your mask. Right. Ask, be safe. Because at, what we're starting to see and what we're starting to see, like what we're seeing from other places is that young people are the ones that are getting sick, are getting more infected. Um, they are also the ones that oftentimes, you know, likely more often than not are asymptomatic. So that means they're spreading it all around. But we're seeing a lot in at least Florida has come up um, as a place where we're seeing a lot of young people in the hospital. Right. And so right. while we do have different therapeutics and different uh, things that we've tried that we know work and, and are helping people survive, we still don't know what having coronavirus will do to you long term. So to the extent that you can avoid just getting it, even though you don't feel that you get it, you test positive, you don't feel sick, you don't feel anything, you didn't wind up in the hospital, we don't know what it means long term for you. So just if you can avoid it, avoid it and help your community, because if you start spreading it, we're gonna have to shut down again. No one right. wants to shut down again. Right. right. I am hearing too, Dr. Chima, that if, if you do get sick with this, you can have scar tissue on your lungs, pain that lasts for a very long time. I mean, there's lasting effects to this, correct? Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I can you hear you. Yes. Yeah. I think my mic is not working. Oh, no, we can no, we hear, hear you. you. We hear you. Oh, she might be frozen. This happens. These uh. things happen. It's okay. <laughs> it's normal. Can you hear us or no? You hear us? No. No? Uh, okay. Check, check, check. 
Okay. Well, she was muted for a second, but she's back. Oh, she's gone. She has to dial back in. It's okay. Yeah, this happened last in. week too. So I mean, we'll just to keep- your point, Dr. Chima can answer when she gets back on. We, we don't know. There are some people that do, um, are, are sicker for longer periods of time are feeling different effects from that. So again, like I said, we just don't know the long-term effects of this whole thing. And so if you can avoid getting it, avoid, just avoid getting it and help and help your community by um, not spreading it. So Liani, a lot of folks are very, very worked up about phase three, not hitting yet. What, what are your thoughts on it? Um, from a public health perspective, I'm happy. <laughs> right. Um, obviously, we don't want to end up in a situation where we were in April, right? We just, we just really don't. Um, it, particularly now when there's so many other states going through the same thing. So um, while I understand and I'm obviously saddened that there's going to be things that I would have wanted to do as well that I cannot do, um, it makes sense. So wait, so tell me exactly what phase three looked like, because I know the bars aren't happening and, you know, I know they're not going to increase the number of, you know, people that can go for indoor dining. Those are the two things that I really know about phase three, but I don't really know too much. So those are the biggest pieces of phase three. It was increasing the number of people that can gather, increasing the number of people that can go into restaurants, increasing people, the number of people that can um, go into movie theaters, into amusement parks. So it was um, more of a loosening of the current restrictions, plus bars and more indoor entertainment being able to open, right? Th- those, were, those were the biggest things. Because right now it's that those more of those um, indoor entertainment venues that are not open right now. Wait, are, are movie theaters movie, open? Movie theaters were allowed to open in phase oh, okay. really strict guidelines. Some chose okay. to open, some have chosen not to open, um, but they were allowed to open up. To open up. So it's really a loosening of restrictions, plus okay. adding some like, you know, the bars, right? Clubs, other things that were not open at this point in time, allowing them to open. But as Dr. Chima has said, you know, the indoor space is a concern. We learned a lot and we've seen a lot what happened in South Korea with one person who was asymptomatic at the time, um, was positive, went through, uh, went to a bar slash nightclub and got how many people infected, right? And mm-hmm. um, we yeah. saw what happened in Florida, We've seen what ha- was happened in California, in Texas, lots of cases being tied to bars, right? Because right, and- everybody gets drunk and they start talking to each other's faces. So they take their mask down and... Mask on. I'm going to the bar to have a drink, right? And right. to have a conversation. And that yeah. increases the risk. And the music's going. And so you're like up in people's faces. Again, increases the risk. Yeah, there's a lot of like, you know, booty rubbing and stuff like that that happens at the bar. So <laughs> at least at the bar I go to. And honestly, you don't really know like how good these like establishments are really like cleaning up after these type of nights. Yeah. Booty sweat nights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think my general rule that I tell my patients to, you know, wear your mask and, and do the three C's, which is avoid closed, crowded, uh, you know, and close contact spaces and bars are just kind of you know, violate all those three C's. So you have to just, at this point, you know, we're doing so well in our state. We have the, able to enjoy the outdoors, get back, you know, get a little bit of a mental reprieve. I think we need to keep ahead of the curve. And, you know, we need to balance our own individual rights with uh, being global good citizens. So we have to not only think about us, but also more importantly, think about how this virus, you know, can be transmitted to other people and how humans are the main vectors of the virus. And that's why the virus continues to spread on and increase quite dramatically across the United States. Well, you girls have blown my mind. You know, I mean, we learned a lot today, but um, I would love for us in the next couple of weeks again to check back and just see how things are developing. I'm crossing my fingers, as I'm sure you both are, that the numbers don't go back up. I feel like I'm waiting for the numbers to go back up and it's a really bad feeling. I don't like I don't like the feeling. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I hopefully we can try to keep these numbers low and everybody do what they're supposed to do, you know, as the responsibility to all of the citizens here in Connecticut. Yeah. Danny, can I say one thing about keeping numbers low? Uh, Danny, please important. say it. Please. <laughs> <laughs> um, the way we keep numbers low, one of the way we're going to keep numbers low is through contact tracing, right? And I, and I want to let your listeners know about this because I think it's important. You may get a phone call. If you, um, if you test positive, you will get a phone call from either your local public health, de- your local health public health department or the Department of Public Health at the state level. 
They're going to want to interview you. It's called contact tracing. They're going to want to know where you were, what you were doing. And then they're going to ask you who you were with, right? And so we need you to tell us who you were with. We're not going to call that person and say, did you know that you were with tal y tal fulana de tal and they got the virus? And now we heard you was at the gas station near Pump 6. We're not going to do any of that, right? What we are going to do is contact that person and let them know that they were possibly exposed or that they were exposed to someone who tested positive for the coronavirus and we need them to quarantine. Um, And can they help us by doing that? But we need people to answer that phone call. We need people to give us that information because that is how we're going to be successful. When you look at all of the places that have been successful in doing this, they have done very intense contact tracing. So if you get a phone call from a number that says Connecticut COVID trace, because that's what we're all using across the state, it doesn't matter, but it's Connecticut COVID trace. And, um, you know, I'll send you the number and you can post it later. There's an actual phone number that everyone will, it will come up on your caller ID, please pick up. This is the way that we're going to stop the virus. This is the way that we're going to stop outbreaks from happening in our community. Um, And we need your help. We really, really, really need your help. Um, You know, Dr. Chima mentioned about uh, individual rights, but there's also individual responsibility and community responsibility. And you helping us helps us help the community and helps the business community and helps all of us because the sooner we can get out and do more things, if we can keep this virus under control. Well, I appreciate you both today coming on the show. Thank you. Okay. And again, I'm going to read everybody's title. So just hold on. Okay. Uh, First of all, (laughs) Liani Arroyo, director of the department of health and human services for the city of Hartford. Thank you. We love having you on the show. And it was great meeting you, Dr. Fika Chima, who's the director. Hold on. Let me take a breath. Who's the director for the (laughs) transplant infectious disease for Hartford hospital, Connecticut, the assistant director for general infectious disease for Hartford hospital, Connecticut, who's also the assistant professor for the university of Connecticut school of medicine. (sighs) Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you, girls. It's on 937.